looking at a one-of-a-kind custom gun in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. Now I say one of a kind, this is actually repeatable. You guys can build one of your own, but this is mine and this is my custom DMR from Thunderkiss Northwest. So I reached out to Thunderkiss Northwest and I wanted to build, have a DMR build project for a very long time. And these guys stepped up the plate and they built it for me. And uh, let me go ahead and knock uh, the bad news out of the way. This is kind of a review, kind of a show and tell, but it's also uh, a very pricey gun. I'm not gonna lie to you guys here. So definitely come out this thing retails for a hair over 1400 bucks so for you guys looking for a budget build now might be the time to, to click another video or something over here but if you want to see a really cool custom dmr that has everything you can possibly put under the hood and then some stay tuned this is going to be a great review and just up your alley so if you guys don't know who Thunderkiss Northwest is, they are a small shop that's known for their custom high-end builds out of Vancouver, Washington, United States of America. You probably know their work best by Unicorn Leah's Unicorn Slayer, that pink gun she uses and knocks down opponents. In fact, it's my first experience with Thunderkiss was seeing the effectiveness of her rifle at the BB Wars Water Wars game with Airsoft GI a handful of months ago. And that's what prompted me to reach out to Thunderkiss to have this thing built. So let's talk externals, then we're gonna talk internals. And this is gonna be a little different because this is not based on a gun. They didn't start with like a VFC or g g or any brand out there. They build this from the ground up with mostly parts they have sourced themselves and have tested to work together. So externally, we're looking first at a DMR build. I wanted something long, but I wanted it lightweight. A lot of DMRs have a lot of heft to them. So we went with a 20 inch outer barrel. It is fluted for that kind of cool look. I wanted something kind of like this bull barrel kind of feel with the fluting on it to make it look a little different than all the rest of the M4s with the flash hiders because I'm not gonna put a, a freaking suppressor on this thing or a flash hider. I want to look really aggressive out of the box. Moving on down is this big old rail. I wanted to go key mod, but I didn't want to get stuck with key mod on all sides. So we have a huge rail on the bottom. It gives me the ability to be flexible with what I put on here. If I do want to run, if I get crazy, want to run a bipod, my scope cam will probably mount here on the bottom as well in the front and to use other accessories. I wanted to have the freedom of using that, but then I didn't want the weight of having the rails on the side. But of course you do get that top rail and that's very important for a DMR build because in DMRs you need that rail space to put a very large magnified optic, which is what's going on here. I have a variable optic from G&G. &G. It's going to go on top of this thing and it's going to be the, uh, the go-to for this so I can actually see the opponents at distance and still dial it back to that one-time zoom if I need to get a little closer, but I can't get too close and we'll talk about why about that when we get to chrono. Moving on down the externals, uh, the body, this receiver is actually their receiver. They have it custom built with their little logo right here on the side, little bearded guy, nice aggressive look. And then of course the paint job, uh, you can't pass that up. They went with my logo here on the other side of the receiver, nice subtle yellow. I didn't want to go over the top. With Leah's gun, they went hot pink and all that crazy stuff. And I, I told him, I was like, look, we can do the paint job. Let's kind of keep this thing a little more toned down because I'm going to be taking this to some Milsom events. So I still want to be able to use this outdoors and not be like a huge beacon of yellow and black. So with the subtle stripes, top and bottom, there on the front, the logo here on the side. They even did the hex mag here by Ditac that came with it. And then, of course, my actual company name on both sides here on the stock. Now, the stock and the grip are Mission First Tactical. This is the battle stock. And, uh, of course, we have their grip here. Uh, moving on to the other accessories, we do have the trigger guard with the finger rest, which I do like the finger rest for a DMR. Sometimes you got to sit there and wait to take the shots with something like this. You're not going to be just like running gun up close. You need to make sure those count. So a place to put the finger, just kind of a little personal preference. And then also the Strike Industries Cobra 4 grip on here. I went with it because I've had one in the past. I got rid of it and I kind of regretted it. I find myself grabbing rifles like this and it provided a really good platform for a grip, for a stable grip, but still let me get low to the ground if I've got to just like prop up. That's why I didn't do the bipod just yet. I may not do that again because of the weight issues, but this kind of gives that nice little hand stop feel without having to go with a full foregrip or even a stubby that might make it difficult to keep a low profile when taking those long shots. Across the top, do you have some iron sights here? Back up, flip uh, front and rear. One of those, because you never know when your optic power could go out or you just want to ditch it and you just need to have those iron sights or God forbid somebody shoot your optic out, which has happened to me before. Then they do have a unique custom charging handle here in the back. Standard safe semi and auto fire selector. It's set up for a lefty. I didn't need any ambi set up like that because I mean, I'm a righty guy, it's no big deal. And then again, all around a clean look, but still a little bit unique. 
All right, let's talk about internals, but I still, before we jump exactly into what's under the hood in the mech box, I wanna talk about the actual shell of the receiver first, because this actually works in concert with the mech box. The mech box itself is a quick change spring system. And if you guys know quick change spring systems, you know, well, they're not exactly quick. You still have to take the receiver out of the mech box and then you can get to it. It just saves you from having to open your mech box up, which is good for a custom build because you don't wanna mess up what they've done for you. What's unique about what the guys at Thunderkiss have is they have a custom mech box and a custom upper and lower receiver. So on the lower receiver, you actually can remove this ring here for the buffer tube, you unscrew it, you can take the buffer tube off and you can take the post that actually the buffer tube sits on and it unscrews from the receiver. So then you can access the mech box without having to take it out of the body. So there's no need to take your motor grip off, your motors, all that mess stuff, and wires and all the potential issues you can have there. Just the buffer tube all the way off, take the post out and you can do your quick change, which is huge, especially for a DMR build. Sometimes there's a need to maybe turn the FPS up if you can at bigger events, or if you wanna turn this back down to like a standard field legal gun for skirmishes, you may wanna do that because this thing's a little bit over what you can take to your average indoor field and most outdoor fields. So continuing on with the internals, like I said, it's their own custom mech box shell. And I'm gonna get a little geeky with you guys out there that wanna know the specs of what's under the hood. 16 to one ratio gears in this because I knew I'd be having the big springs in here. And it gives me that flexibility to put a softer spring in if I want. You do sacrifice a little rate of fire, but not much, especially in a DMR. It's all about trigger response. Also to keep all that stuff moving, eight millimeter bearing bushings with four millimeter shafts on them. So you definitely had that reinforcement to keep those gears in place. CNC'd piston on this, needed the durability, dual O-ring piston head for good air seal and a ton of other parts going on, including a Mad Bull 60 degree bucking in there, the blue kind, to really make sure those shots are very consistent. And running it all out, got a nice high torque motor and a snap trigger. They use the snap triggers, not a MOSFET in here. They found that the reliability of a snap action trigger, it's way better than your standard contact type trigger that you find in most every AG, but you don't have the risk of burning out like some of the MOSFETs of late, especially the higher technology MOSFETs sometimes have a tendency to do that. I've experienced that in one of three installs I've had in my own personal guns, and it, usually it's at that really inopportune moment where you're trying to take the shot. So for a DMR build, something really reliable, that snap action trigger rounds out the reliability of a very robust build. All right, take it to the chrono. This is where things are gonna be a little high for most of you guys. Shoots around 475 feet per second with a 0 .20 gram BB. And that is, again, up there. I had this built at that level for a specific event. Again, remember, you have a quick change spring system, so you do have that option to dial it up or dial it back. Like if you go to, let's say, a Lion Claws event, I can actually take this a little higher. If I go play outdoor skirmish at a local field, I can swap it out for maybe a 400 feet per second spring, like a 120 or maybe even a 110 in there, and get it down to make this field legal. And I wanted that flexibility in this gun to be able to use because I think this is going to be an investment I made for the long term. So guys, if you're looking for a very unique custom build, especially the custom paint jobs, like I said, I went very tame with the, the build on this one, uh, but you can go crazy. Some of their Cerakote work is insane. Like I said, take a look at uh, Unicorn Leah's uh, build there, Unicorn Slayer. It's unbelievable with the hot pink and the blood on the front coming down. Very nice build. Uh, definitely take a look at Thunderkiss Northwest and they can build you just about anything you want. Like I said, this one came with everything but the kitchen sink. Very premium price, around that yeah, $1,400 retail price, give or take a few dollars. But fear not on that price tag, they do offer discounts. Actually a pretty hefty one if you're getting a build. So it brings that price down from that $1,400 point down to a little under $1,000. Still very, very on the premium end, but the discount by buying this build together, having them use all their parts and put it together is a huge savings off list. But again, they have something that'll fit just about any budget, whether large or small. And as always, if you guys wanna learn more, I have a link to Thunderkiss Northwest site and this build are over there in the description below. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you're not currently a subscriber, click on the logo in the bottom right or in the description and you'll always be in the know. Plus, if you like what you saw in this video and wanna learn more, I've got a link down there as well. And if you haven't had your airsoft fix just yet, click in the videos on the right or use the info button at the top of the screen for more. And as the saying goes, everyone has an opinion and I do want to hear yours. So give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this video, comment and share.